Hi everyone and welcome back to another Go tutorial. Now in this tutorial we're going to be looking at multi-stage Docker images and how you can effectively use them to minimize the size of the container needed for your production Go applications. Now by the end of this tutorial we're going to have covered the following. So we're going to have covered what multi-stage Docker files are. We're then going to look at how you can build a simple multi-stage Docker file for our Go application. And finally, we're going to look at how we can deploy our minified Docker image to DigitalOcean. So Docker is a seriously powerful containerization technology that can be used to easily spin up isolated and reproducible environments in which our applications can be both built and run. It's growing in popularity and more and more cloud service providers are providing native Docker support to allow you to easily deploy your containerized apps for the world to see. Now, just to let you know, this is a follow-up to my previous Go plus Docker tutorial, and I'll be leaving a link to that in the description below. Now, in order to see why multi-stage Docker files are useful, we're going to be creating a simple Docker file that features one stage to both build and run our application. And then we're going to be creating a second Docker file, which features both a builder stage and a production stage. Now, once we have both of these different Docker files defined, we should be able to compare them and hopefully see for ourselves just how multi-stage Docker files are preferred over their simpler counterparts. So let's jump into Visual Studio Code and create a simple Docker file for this incredibly simple Go application. Now I'm just going to call this Docker file, like so. And I'm going to do from golang 1.12.0 and I'm going to use one of the Alpine images, so Alpine 3.9. I'm then going to do run make directory slash app. I'm going to add the current content to my directory to this app directory. I'm then going to specify my current working directory as this new app directory. And I'm going to both run and build my Go application. So first we're going to build it. Go build main dot. And I'm going to specify the start command, which is going to be slash app slash main, which will be the name of the executable that's created from this previous step here. Now coming into my terminal, I'm going to do the following. So docker build dash t, and I'm going to call this go dash simple and passing in the current directory. That's going to go ahead and create this docker image for us. And we'll hopefully be able to see this image like so. And I'm just going to grep for go simple and you can see it has successfully created this docker image for us and you can see the size of this docker image is 349 megabytes now within this image will be all of the packages and dependencies that are needed to both compile and run our go application so that includes the go standard library includes the go compiler binary and so on now with multi-stage Docker files, we can actually reduce the size of these images drastically by splitting things up into two distinct stages. Now, with multi-stage Docker files, we typically tear these things apart and we split out the task of building and running our Go application into a separate stage that we call the builder stage. Now, within this builder stage, we tend to pick images that are fairly bulky and feature all of the dependencies and packages needed in order to compile our final binary executable for of our Go application. Now, the next stage of our multi-stage Docker file is the run or production stage. And within this different stage, we tend to go for a far more lightweight image that only has all of the necessary requirements in order to run a simple binary executable. Now, by doing it this way, we benefit from a consistent build stage and we also benefit from having an absolutely tiny image in which our application will run in a production environment. So now that we've covered the basic concepts, let's take a look at how we could define a real multi-stage Docker file that will first compile our application and subsequently run our application in a lightweight Docker Alpine image. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to be stealing the code from my other Go WebSockets tutorial, as this demonstrates downloading dependencies and is a somewhat non-trivial example and thus closer to a real Go application than your standard Hello World example. Now, if you want the source code for this, 
It will be made available in the Go Multi-Stage Docker file tutorial, which I'll be leaving a link to in the description below. But for now, let's copy and paste it. And we'll cover briefly what it does. So as you can see here, it pulls in the Gorilla WebSocket library. And it defines a simple WebSocket func uh, endpoint that basically just listens for any incoming WebSocket connections and listens for any messages on those connections. And finally, you can see that it listens and serves on port 8080. Now, just to make the process of building this and pulling in dependencies easier, I'm going to be using Go modules. And I'm going to initialize my project to use Go modules by using Go mod init. And I'm going to pass in github.com slash Elliot Forbes. Forbes. And I'm going to call this Go multi stage Docker file tutorial, like so. That'll create a new Go mod file for us. And we'll then be able to simply build and run this using go run dot slash dot dot dot. Nice and simple. Now, the next thing we're going to do is come into the Docker file. And we're going to update this Docker file to feature both our builder stage and our production stage. So I'm going to first off change the image that we're basing this off of. And I'm going to alias this as the builder stage. And within my run command, I'm going to specify cgo enabled equals zero and the operating system equals Linux. And I'm going to do dot slash dot dot dot. And with our builder stage defined, I'm then going to define my lightweight scratch production image. So I'm going to do from Alpine latest. And again, I'm going to alias this as production. And I'm going to copy from my builder stage, so from builder, the contents of my app directory into this directory. And I'm going to kick off my executable just by running dot slash main like so. Now with all of that defined, I'm going to be able to build this multi-stage image using the same build command. So docker build minus t go dash multi-stage. And that's going to go away and both build and pull in all the dependencies for my application. And then finally, once it's built it, it's going to then copy it into my production image. And as you can see, everything has went as planned. And we're going to be able to run this now by doing docker run. We're going to run it in interactive mode and we're going to bind it from port 8080 to the internal port of port 8080. And we're going to do go multi stage like so. As you can see, it's been able to successfully start my application. And I'll then be able to connect into that using localhost port 8080 on my current machine. Awesome. So we have been able to successfully create and define a simple multi-stage Docker file, which works for an almost production ready Go application. Now the final step of this tutorial is going to be deploying this to a digital ocean droplet. So within the digital ocean, I'm going to specify create a new droplet. I'm then going to click on the marketplace and select a Docker image. And I'm going to specify the $5 a month server just in New York or wherever you fancy with my SSH key. And I'm simply going to create that droplet. Now that's going to go ahead and provision that server for us. And once we have that server, we'll then be able to SSH onto that server and deploy and run our Docker application. Now, as you can see here, DigitalOcean has successfully provisioned us with a droplet and given us an IPv4 address that we can SSH into. But before we can deploy our Docker application to this droplet, we first need to push it up to GitHub so that we can then subsequently clone it down onto our droplet, build it and run it. So I'm going to do git init, git remote, add origin and the git location of my repository, git add everything, git commit, initial commit, oops, initial commit like so and get push origin master. And give that a second. Enter my password. And it will push everything that we've done here up to my repository. Now with that done, I can open up my iter. I can SSH into my newly created droplet 
and I can do get clone and I can again steal the location from this GitHub repository. Give this a second to load. Get clone. We'll use the HTTPS version. Copy that in. That's pulled that down. I can then CD into that directory. Docker build minus T go multi stage. Just as we did on our local machine, that's going to pull down all the dependencies and images and it's going to be lightning quick. And then finally, once this is done, we're going to be able to run this using the Docker run command. So I'm going to give this just another couple more seconds. And almost done. As you can see again, it's running through the builder stage. And finally, that has been created. So I can now docker run, and I'm gonna run this in detached mode, and I'm gonna bind the port 8080, again to port 8080 running within the container. And I'm gonna pass in go multi-stage, like so. Perfect, and if we now do docker ps, we should see that our container is now running on this droplet and it has been mapped from port 8080 to port 8080. So just to verify everything is working as expected, I'm going to open up my Google Chrome. I'm then going to steal the IPv4 address and open this up in a new tab with port 8080. And as you can see, it is successfully returning the homepage endpoint of my Go application that we've just deployed there. Awesome, so that is all we're going to cover within this tutorial. Now, hopefully this has given you some idea how, to, how you can create your own multi-stage Docker files for your own production applications in Go. Now, if this was helpful or if you have any comments or suggestions, then please let me know in the comments section down below. If you'd like to su support the channel, then please like and subscribe. And I would just like to say a massive thanks to the Patreon subscribers who are supporting the channel. It is always a delight when I see one of you subscribe, and I would just like to say a massive thanks for your support. Cheers.